Let's get started. Psalms 29, Psalms 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Lord, I pray and thank you, Lord, for the revelation and the ministry of your word, Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you would enlighten our heart, heart, minds, O oh God, condition our hearts to receive what it is that you are trying to say to the people of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. This scene is a lot, is a, is a, this scene is a scene of Lot and his daughters running from Sada and Gomorrah. It's courtesy of firstartgallery.com. The PowerPoint template is designed by TomRitchie.net. However, the contents, the words, the research is mine. What is the coat of arms? The coat of arms is symbolism. Symbolis symbolism of a country's military power and strength. The definition of symbolism is an article, concept, or notion that represents another thing. According to the article written in Time Lab magazine, the symbolism of an eagle is courage and faith. A coat of arm insignia consists of a shield with other articles, such as a crown. However, beasts are a notion and an implied representation that is important to the history of a nation. Now, there is symbolism in the Bible in Revelations 7. Um, verse 11. Okay. Um, in the Bible, Revelation, um, the, the propagandists and symbolism are beast, the devil, the deceiver, father of lies, the great red dragon, beast, old serpent, serpent. In Revelation 19.20, he is called both the beast and the false prophet. When you see this picture, it looks kind of kind of spooky. Okay, um, imagine John the Revelator, Apostle John in Revelation nine seven eleven, was trying to trying to 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 understand what he was what he was seeing. Now, if you read this pastor passage. Revelation 9, 7, 11. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, prepared unto battle. And all their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth was were as the teeth of lion. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sounds of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hunt men five months. Now this is a really creepy and scary and unbelievable when you hear that. Okay, so John the Apostle, Apostle John was doing the best to to understand his vision and what he's seen. And, you know, when you have a vision, you don't have an hour long to, to see what you see. You may have a second. You will have to describe a whole scene. I know I have visions. It's quick. And you see a whole story in just a, a second or two. And so he absorbed all that information. And he has to write down because Jesus told him, write down what you see. These are revelations from God. Um, John was seeing the future. God is compassionate and loving. There is a blessing that says that whoever reads this book will be blessed. So God doesn't, doesn't want us to be afraid 
um, when, you know, we read the revelation, he wants to understand it because these are things that's going to happen. Okay. So, you know, if you saw this image back then, you see this man wearing this gas mask, protective suit uh, of a war, then, you know, you, you never seen anything like it. He was giving his a point of reference. If you would have saw it, the first thing, you know, right now, knowing what you know, the first thing you would say, oh my God, that's an alien. It is, it is believed that is that is what Apostle John must have felt. Look at these images of war in his vision. He tried to make sense of something he never saw and attempt to describe it the best way he can through his day and time. So there are some similarities um, between um, symbolism of war and what Apostle John saw. Okay, this is a man who, who's been flying in World War II, World War II, World War I. Okay, so look. Okay, we have helmets. You see, there were locusts that were looked, he says, and the shapes of the locals were like unto horses. Now, horses is the symbolism for battle, okay? In his time, he knew there was war, okay? He didn't see any airplanes, but he did see those on, with, on, on horses and chariots, okay? And he did see locusts. You know, locusts was the only thing flying around that's loud. He heard sounds. He heard... um. He, he, been, he heard sounds and noises. It's something that he'd never heard before, but he had to explain it. So could it be that he saw, you see the image of locusts here? This is the image of a locust. This is the image of man with the goggle. It looks like a locust. You see these legs here? They all look like the antennas and legs of a lo locust, okay? But what John actually did see was the night wishes, the Russian women bomb squad. In the, the 50, 80, 588 night bomber squadron composed of thousands of Russian women who slew their bombers called, I'll say PO2, but it's polycarbol. They call it the PO2 for short. Their mission was not the given to give the Germans rest, and I, I think this was World War II, not the givens rest during the night. The men during the day bombed the Germans, and the, and the reinforcement were the women, the night bombers at night. So the Germans was up 24 hours, and that was the strategic plan to defeat them. Okay, so this is, this is an image of, you know, what John may have saw in the air. This is the woman. He said they have long hair like women. Okay, it's just imagine that woman in the airplane, just as we seen earlier with the man. Okay, he's he's seen women with long hair. Okay, so this is um the the peel to flying. Okay, so this is what John may have saw in his vision. I'm pretty sure that's what he saw. This is the locust flying. And this is the PL2 flight. Okay, so he did his he gave his point of reference and tried to tell us what is coming our way, the best way he could um, understand it. Yes, he heard loud noises, and you know, uh, I heard the engine of a PL2. It's loud. Okay, it's loud. The motor is loud. In Apostle John's day, the battlegrounds were flanked with Roman soldiers, cavalry of horses, camel corps, wreath leaf crowns as helmets, linen turbans, spears, bow and arrows, not tactical marching boots, and a rubber latex suit with a long protruding nose that resembled an elephant. No, he didn't see those things. Cedars of Lebanon, Lebanon was used to building, erecting, you know, temples and churches 
um, and building machines for chariots and, and wheels for the chariots. Not heavy metals to build loud motorized aircraft with gunnery. You know, he said he saw tail. He said the, team, the, the tail had stings. He see this, this ammunition in these missiles, these bombs being dropped out the tail of these aircrafts. And they were loud. The Industrial Revolution came thousands of years later in 1830. However, God gave Apostle John the privilege to notify us, hey, this is coming your way. Okay? And he did the best, again, he did his best to describe it. Apostle John saw the future, a prophecy, the actual war taking place, propaganda, Russian, Germans, night bombing squad, campaigns and actual raids taking place on the battleground during World War I, the first ever recorded in the galaxy was the war in heaven. The war occurs in the Bible 225 times. In King James Holy Bible, it's is in 220 verses. In addition, the war, the word war occurs 15 times written in 13 voices, verses. Why did God want us to know so much about war? Does war have a spiritual undertone? Undertone means a partly hitting feeling or meaning. Are we really understanding the impact or sacredness of war? Even though millions are killed and millions of casualties have been left throughout the course of war from all time, is it ethical? Is war just? That is our research question. Okay, we're going back to the Cold War. The Cold War. The Russians were the lead players in World War I and World War II. The reason why the Soviets was at war in the Middle East between 1979 and 1989, which is the end of the Cold War, the Soviets invaded and occupied Afghanistan to spread communism. By spreading communism, that would only enlarge their territory, boost their Russian economy, contributing to a rise in power to purchase more guns, more machine gun, and more heavy artillery equipment. In 1989, which was the fall of Russia, Russia was helped by Russia fall was achieved by the assistance of the American government. The U.S. sent supplies to Afghanistan or Afghanis in, in Iraq countries against the Soviet Union so that they would not gain advantage on their during their war invasion. You know, at this time, the Soviet invaded Afghanistan. So this is the Cold War. United States sends supplies to Afghanis so that they can defend themselves against the Russian, you know, because the Soviet Union was a total titanian government, okay? They wanted to gain access to the border, all the borders. And at the same time, believe it or not, Iran was at war with Iraq. There were two different wars going on at the same time in the Middle East. You know, Afghan, um, the Soviet had invaded uh, Afghanistan, and Iran was a fight in Iraq. Why? to control the borders. 
after eight years of fighting, um, you, you, United Nation um, negotiated a ceasefire between the fighting cousin Iraq and Iran. They were at war for eight years. Why? Because Iraq wanted to control the borders. Iran wanted to control the borders, so they were fighting each other at the same time. During the same time, as I stated, Russia was in there, you know, in Afghanistan. So, you know, three nations, you know, all the borders are fighting almost at the same time. Remember, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forward. During the Cold War, of course, you know the year again, is 1948 to 1991. In 1979 to 1981, the Iranians held 444 American hostages that worked as ambassador at the embassy in Tehran. Okay, we're going backwards. During the Cold War, Israel was restored. In 1667, Israel was recaptured. Israel recaptured Jerusalem as the sixth day of fighting war with their relatives. The Syrian army, the Palestinian, and Egyptians. The Egyptian president, Nasser, hated the Jews just like other nations hated the Jews. He declared to wipe Israel off the map and to throw the Jews into the sea. Consequently, the Six Day War unified them and they became stronger and they regained their land. In 1948, the UN restored Jerusalem and put them back on the map. Today, the nation is visited by all people from all walks of life, and it's the home state of three major religions, Christianity, Muslim, and the Orthodox Jews. In 1917 through 1948, the British has captured Jerusalem in World War I to the beginning of the Cold War. 1948 is the beginning of 41, 40, um, of the Cold War. In 1947, the United Nations divided British Palestine in two countries, Jewish and Israel and Arab Palestine. That was, in 1917, was the beginning of the World War I. The British government occupied Jerusalem until then. Now, in World War I, this is a messy alliance. This is going to get kind of confusing. And let's see if we can get it because it's just, everything was tied up and twisted. And it was this ill fate. However, Austria-Hungary initiated the war by declaring war on Serbia in 1941. The Germans warned Russia to not get involved with Serbia war. Okay. The Russia declined to answer Germany's for them not to get involved with Serbia's war because they had alliances. You know, Russia was going to show patriotism and got into the war. So what happened was Germany declared war on Russia. Okay, so because France had alliances with Russia, um, they got into the war. They got into the war. Um, 
So when Rush, when Germany showed nationalism and declared war on Russia, France declared war on Germany because on the Germans because German used a private waterway in Belgium. Okay, and the German sunk their cruise liner. Okay, because the Germans sunk their cruise liner and there was Americans there on them, America with Russia declared war on Germany. Okay, so the whole thing was just all twisted and Italy at some time, at some point, you know, declared war on Austria, uh, Hungary in 1950. Um, What's the whole mess? This all was unfaithful uh, alliances. So, in 1560, now we were going back, okay, we started with 1914 through 1948 into the beginning of the Cold War. Now we're going back in time. We're going back. We're going back to the rulers who had claims on Jerusalem, okay? So, 1516, the Ottoman Empire consists of the Arabs and Persians, who were the world leaders at the time. They were the world leaders for centuries, okay, through, through the 15th, 16th, 16th century, 17th and 18th century. The, the Turkey, Turkey, the Turks started the war in World War I, before Hungary and the Serbians in 1940 against the British. They captured, the Turks captured British forces that was based in Iraq. They were undefeated until the Russians entered the battlefield. The Russians invaded Turkey in 1915 to 1916, and until the Turks were ultimately, de de ultimately defeated in 1917. They fought each other. The Russians and Turks, they fought each other multiple, multiple, multiple times, okay, until the Russians would gain more powerful, proved to be more powerful, than the Turks, and that was the fall of the Ottoman Empire. So before the Turkish, Turkish invasion, the Byzantine Empire ruled the world. The Byzantine Empire were Christian Europeans. The Byzantine Empire wars fought was considered Christian wars. And in 1517, the Ottoman Empire recaptured and reigned over Israel. Rulers that seized Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Malak rulers were Egyptian who ruled over Israel. Um, the, Israel um, prior to being defeated by the Ottoman Empire. In 811 through the 11th and to the 12th century, Saladin recaptured Jerusalem. And from 12 to 13th century, the Crusades, the Christian Crusades, they recaptured Jerusalem two times. That was called the Christian Wars or the Crusader Wars. Although there were many Christian wars during the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, known as the Protestant Reformation Wars, the focus of this research is centered around the Middle East governed by the Roman Empire in the history of Rome, the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire European Christians are known as the Crusaders 
as I mentioned, Rome had to recapture Jerusalem from 1099 to 1187 Common Era. The Crusaders fought in a series of wars to regain Jerusalem. They fought in a total of nine sequential wars in the Holy Land. The Turks had control over Jerusalem then. Pope Urban II was the Pope, believed that it was God's will to war, so he initiated the Crusades. The, Crusades. the fighting cousins, the Turks and the Muslim, had control over Israel. The Christians wanted to retrieve control over Israel since the Byzantine period. In 1099, the Christian Crusade did the unthinkable thing in the name of Jesus. They tortured babies by throwing them against stone walls. They killed Jews by burning them alive and throwing them against those stone walls. They burned the synagogues to the ground. People, Pope, Pope Innocent III led the Fourth Crusade, which initiated the schism between the Byzantine Empire and the Roman um, European Christians. The main goal for the Crusades is to reclaim ownership as Rome did during the time of Jesus and his ministry. The Romans are responsible for putting Jesus' death on a tree. Putting Jesus to death on a tree. Jesus rose from the dead and ascended on high to be at the right hand of the Father now and forever. Now, the Byzantine Empire initiated the Christian wars with the Arabs, the Muslim kingdom, that ruled over Jerusalem prior to 638 CE. The Byzantine Empire captured Jerusalem from the Persian in 1614 and when the war and went to war and recaptured Jerusalem, Jerusalem 629. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built around 335 CE. They hung their flag in the sanctuary, which is very, very symbolic. Observe the sim symbolism in this picture. There is one beast, a dragon, with two heads, wearing dia with diadems. They are many coats of arms nestled in the dragon's wings. Each coat of arms show in the holy sepulcher represent Christian states. Most of the Christian fought centuries later in World War I as Christians against the Turks and, other, and, and, and against each other. If you look closely, there's a representation of Christ hanging on the cross, but put there by the Roman Empire. People go back and forth arguing the point that Jesus was hung on a cross uh, against it, or, or, or Jesus was hung on a tree. My argument wouldn't be that what well, if he was hung on a cross or, or a tree is the fact that, you know, why is there a dragon Represent the cross put there by the Byzantine Empire. So there's a lot of symbolism going on. There's a lot of symbolism. And, and if you can look closely, that these coats of arms, like I mentioned before, are all Christian nations. Okay? Who wanted rulers or who want to seize or rule Jerusalem. That's the goal. That's the plan. This is the flag of the Roman Empire at the time when it was destroyed um, in 70 AD. At the time the temple was destroyed, that time period was from 70 AD to 324 CE AD. Again, this was before the Byzantine Empire schism. 
Do you see they still represented by the coat of arm of the dragon? You see that? The double head dragon in the wing. This is where the dragon comes from, from the Bible. God calls the dragon, the beast, the devil, Lucifer. The beast is not Christ, the Messiah, nor is it is an accurate representation of Christianity. Christianity. The cross is symbolic for the tree of Jesus hanging on the tree prior to him being put in death by the Roman Empire. This movement is called the House of David. There is nothing behind the cross but the power of God to be released by the power of the Holy Spirit in the earth. The House of David thereafter are Though, I mean, those who are in the house of David thereafter must be empowered by the Holy Spirit. The house of David is listed 26 times in the King James Version because Israel is not recognizing Christ right now. There will be war. Prophecy. This picture is the. It depicts uh, Daniel, Revelation, um, in in the book of Daniel. This picture is the image of the King Nebuchadnezzar statue. Okay, it has the uh, the in 141 BC the Roman conquered Greece. We're going back. Okay, in 332. 332, 141, it was the Greek Kingdom Empire. Alexander the Great conquered Persia, Judea, Judea, Judea and Jerusalem. 539 to 322, it was the Persian Empire that we talked about earlier. You know, Persia had been around a long time, um, centered around Jerusalem, but they had, they were rulers then. It was prophesied in the Bible that the, that the, the Medo-Persian Kingdom you know, rulers like King Cyrus, you heard of in the Bible and that, that Daniel spoke of in the, in the Babylonian Empire, the Babylonian Empire in Jerusalem. Um, King Cyrus, the Jews, um, you know, that he returned the Jews from exile back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. You reread re that. Of course, in 586 BC, the Babylonians, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, seized Jerusalem and the Jews and they took the Jews in, in the exile for 70 years. Okay, and guess what? They destroyed the, the temple, the first temple. And before that, the 701, 701 is the Assyrian rulers. Okay, they destroyed or they conquered Israel, the, you know, 10 tribes, Israel, who was in Samaria. Okay, they first, you know, you know, initiated the prophecy that God said this was going to happen. And so this was, um, this is prophecy. Okay, the first war war was the battle of Jericho. Remember I said the first war war wasn't in, didn't kick off by the Serbia or Hungary or even the Turks. Okay, the first war war was the battle of Jericho. Okay, this is technically the first world war. I am setting the record straight for history. This is recorded in the Bible. The first world war happened in Joshua. Joshua, when concerning the promised land, when they went out to capture the promised land from Canaan. Okay, there was a total of 31 kingdoms, battles, countries or nations that was the for first war war one you can read it in joshua 5 verse 13 through 6 and 27 chapter 27 around a thousand bc king solomon built the first jewish temple 
1960 BC, King David recaptured Jerusalem from the Philistines. Okay, the first and the last war. The first war, not war war, okay, meaning a combination of other nations. No, the first war ever recorded was the war that Aben, Aber fights to rescue his nephew Lot in Genesis um, chapter 13 and 14. And the last war on this earth will be the war um, that's prophecy, prophesied, the battle of Armageddon. And so, prophecy. My famous statement is, war must progress in order to unfold prophecy. It must happen. In um, chapter 19 of Genesis, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is found in Genesis um, 19, 24, 26. God has promised, um, God, um, God destroyed the wicked city Sodom and Gomorrah for evil reason. Lot and his daughters were spared. But Jesus once said in Luke 17, 13, I mean 17, 32, remember Lot's wife? Lot's wife was running to the hills with her family. However, she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt located at this area here, Mount so Sodom near the Dead Sea. My research question is, would Sodom be restored by war just as Samaria was? Samaria was destroyed in war and Israel was taken captive by the Assyrian in 1722. You'll find that in 1 Chronicles 5, 26, 2 Kings 17, 5 through 6, 2 Chronicles 32 to 23. As we discovered that the restoration of Israel happened thousands of years later in 1948. It is going to take prophecy to unfold, to verify that it was prophesied in the book of Ezekiel 16 to 53. Yahweh said, I will restore their fortune, both fortunes of Sodom and her daughters, and the fortune of Samaria and her daughters. And I will restore your own fortunes in the midst as a control base. This is the control. This is the prophecy that Sodom must be put back on the map restored even though israel like i mentioned israel was was taken off the map before because of disobedience but god promised restoration in 1948 they're there they're here even today even today so let's look at our criteria let's look at our research okay was the war between America and Afghanistan just? Did, was the last, was the, when the American immobilized their armed forces to Afghanistan, was it a last result? We know that 9-11 happened September 9-11, September 11, 2001. And weeks later in October, they were sent, executed to, sent to execute Al-Qaeda leaders, okay? Osama bin Laden, bin Laden. Was that a last result? 
Was there just cause? Okay, we it has to be a just cause. Was uh, did this tyrant ruler? Did he, you know, threaten the people in Afghanistan? Did he um, make them go on a hunger strike? Did he threaten to drop a bomb on them? Was he a tyrant ruler? So was there just cause? Let's look at, let's look at, was the war declared by a valid authority? Yes, it was, it was declared by the United States government. Now, was there a probability of success? Now, now knowing that we have already discussed, one of the criterions is that both nations has to believe that they must be able to win the war in order to enter the war, according to the just warfare, or to engage in warfare. So was there probability of success on both sides, on both nations? Let's look at proportionality. We said that, that, that do you engage all your military forces to fight one nation? Do you activate uh, the army, the navy, for the air force, and the marines? Okay, on your navy to and drop a bomb on them. Okay, was that left intact? In the exercise, was there a justifiable exit strategy? Was the aftermath, was the rights of the nation um, put in place as we talked about, okay? Did, was the nation left um, able to to be on their own, to function independently? You know, was reasonable peace treaties established? Was people, you know, compensated? for war. Was the war between Afghanistan and the United States Matthew 24, 68, Jesus says, and you shall hear wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there should be famine and pestilence and earthquake and divers in places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Pray safe. Stay safe. Thanks for viewing. May God bless you.